Hey, everybody, this is Troy Alexander, Inspiration with Troy Alexander. I am so excited tonight. We have an amazing guest. And I, listen, she is amazing and phenomenal, and I am just honored to have her on our broadcast tonight. But listen, before we even go there, our show is here to inspire you to dream. My goodness, I'm out of a dream. Take that step and walk with purpose into your destiny. So tonight, I'm telling you right now, don't give up on your dream. We're on Facebook, Troy Alexander. We're on Instagram. I love taking photos at Troy Alexander Photo. We're also on YouTube at Inspiration with Troy Alexander Live. But listen, before I introduce our amazing guest, just one point of purpose. Listen, don't ever let go of your power to dream. Now, I'm telling you right now, there is a power and a belief when you can have a dream and know that something greater is coming than distant than where you are now. I'm telling you, hold on to it. There's a power in it and you have it. You just got to believe. So tonight, I'm excited again for this amazing young lady who has graced us with our broadcast, with her presence. Listen, she is a student at Hofstra University majoring in psychology and double monitoring, my goodness, in anthropology and neuroscience, aspiring toward her PhD. Listen, she's also a mental health advocate. Listen, she also is a horseback rider for 13 years. Wow, she competing through college on her own horse. I can't wait to talk about that. Listen, working at the Guide Dog Foundation, Americans Vet Dogs, wow, and listen, also a former title holder with Pageant Door, IUM, AWOS, AWOS, and MAC. Listen, we are honored to have Alexius Rulin. How are you, Alexius? I'm doing well. How are you? I am wonderful. Thank you so much again for this honor, for being on our broadcast. You are just phenomenal, amazing, inspiring, uplifting. My goodness, you are like a star. So I'm honored to have you on our broadcast. Listen, I have so much I want to ask you, but I'm going to start with this. What is it that inspires you or motivates you just to really just be the amazing person that you are? Well, first of all, thank you very, very much for having me tonight. I It's an honor to be here. Um, <clears throat> there's a lot of things that I feel like inspire me. I think the little things in my day-to-day -day life, I really try and take in to push me forward. Um, even the things that might seem insignificant, like waking up and just like making my bed one day, I feel like I take those little things to just push me forward through my day. Wow. Alexi, listen, I, I, I would never thought like, like those things, right? Just being able to make your bed up, get up every day. That is powerful and so <laughs> wonderful. Listen, for those who know you now and those who may be blessed to know you in the path and journey, like I am, I'm too blessed to, to know you. Um, what, and likewise. <laughs> thank you. What, what do you hope or want them to see in you or to, 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 to be inspired by through you? So I feel like there are a lot of people that I know, whether it be my past, like my far past, when high school, middle school, things like that. I have my college people now and I have people outside of college with my horseback riding and whatnot. I feel like everyone sees me in a different light. And I, I really hope that people see the journey that I've taken and have seen where I've come from and how I've done that. I feel like at one point, like I, I started small and I was able to really work through a lot of my demons and push through to where I am today. And I really hope that people can see that journey and take that for themselves to push themselves forward. Wow. Amazing. Phenomenal. And I, and I want to talk a little bit more about that because I, it's interesting that you describe them as demons, right? I want to kind of really explore that a little bit more. Um, but but tell me, can you share like one thing that you've kind of because we want to talk about more, but can you share the one of those what you might describe as demons, like in terms of what you had to overcome or face? Um, Absolutely. Yeah. So in high school, I was kind of dubbed as the horse girl and I was the weird kid who didn't really have a group. Like I was kind of a floater. And I feel like a lot of people just kind of looked at me and laughed at me and kind of taunted me. Um, so getting over that and overcoming it took a long time. Like it took a lot of building my own confidence and 
overcoming my anxieties that other people put onto me and realizing that what other people thought and what other people had to say or input on what I was doing really didn't matter because they didn't see what I was doing. So kind of moving forward from that, I feel like that was a really big part of me that has pushed me to where I am today. Wow. Alexius, can you, can, can you share with us one thing that, that truly helped you to get through that moment? Like, was there one thing, because I'm sure there may be more than one, but um, can you think of one thing that kind of really helped you to kind of push through that time? So like I mentioned, I, I was the horse girl because horses were such a big part of my life. Mm. And I feel like just being at the barn every day was my outlet. That was my happy place. Mucking the stalls and giving my horse extra hay was just so much better than being at school at the time. And it, it just gave me confidence and it was my light at the end of my tunnel. Um, and I really looked forward to that every day. And I took that, ran with it. And now I'm like working them every day, multiple hours a day. Wow. Listen, I love that about you in terms of, you know, that being like your safe space. That yeah. That is a powerful thing because so many people, right, need to find their safe space. And for you, it was the barn. It was the horses. It was all of that. And I think that is just wonderful and so powerful. Now, again, which, which goes right into the next question, which is what inspired you to become a mental health advocate? Because you're amazing. <laughs> so I, like I mentioned before, I really, I, I want people to see where I've come from and not just where I came from because of how I've grown, but because of the journey that I've taken to get where I am. Mm. I want people to um, better themselves and I want to be able to help those because I understand and I empathize with those who might be facing those anxieties and those demons and that bullying and having a hard time finding a safe space or fitting in and feeling like a floater. Mm. So I I just, I, I know the pain and I know how lonely it feels. So I want to be there for someone. I, I want to be the person that I needed at that time for someone else. Oh, wow. Wow, Alexia. That's like, like I felt that when you said that, like, like that to me was like, you want to be there, but like, because you felt it and you want to yeah. be there for someone like you hope that someone will be there for, wow. Absolutely. Oh, oh my goodness. That is, you are just, um, that, that has saved what you just said like really saved so many people to just know that there's someone willing who's been through that. Right. Thousand percent. Yes. And you made it through and yes. you're still going through. I, I really didn't think, you know, at the time, like it just felt so crushing and so um, restricting, but being where I am, I would have never imagined it really. Wow. Wow. And, 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 you know, that goes into, again, um, a question that did you ever doubt that you would actually be here, like or where you are? And Absolutely. how did you come over that? So uh, I didn't think that I would do much with college mm -hmm. um, because I just I didn't want to be around that. I figured high school and middle school would just continue on into college and I wouldn't find my place. I wouldn't find my people. The barn, like I felt like I would never progress. I felt like I would never find my talents and I would never find my interests. And I explored, I just kept pushing through and I'm so honored and grateful to say that I'm proud and I'm so content with where I am at this moment. Wonderful. Listen, I am so proud of you. I am so <laughs> proud of you, Alexius. I really am. You are just, you are, you are powerful. You're strong. You're courageous. And I'm so glad that you didn't allow those other individuals to stop you from pressing through because what we see now, oh my goodness, it's not even going to touch who, who you are still yet to become. Oh my goodness. You are just, first of all, you're phenomenal, but even more to come. And I'm so glad that you didn't stop. And I love the fact that you are this advocate for mental health to want to tell other people, especially young people, don't give up. I've been through that. I love that. Yeah. I love that. 
Oh my goodness. So, um, I, and, and I, you know, we talk a lot about self-care, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, so have you done anything else to be out? Because listen, we're going to talk about your horses, your horseback riding, <laughs> the and your things. but is there anything else that you do to help you regarding your self-care and self-love? I hear a lot about that on social media, right? About, and I've heard that some people actually leave social media, right? To just care for themselves because there's so much stress or anxiety that it can bring um, right. to certain ones. But is there anything else that you do besides horseback riding and other, and oh, the dog, we talk about the dogs and all of that. But yeah. You so you mentioned the barn. That's my big thing. That's my place. But when I'm not at the barn, um, at home, um, I love researching on my own time, which people call me crazy for. But I really do enjoy researching. And right now I'm writing um, a research article on attention just, just because. Um, I love to learn. So I'm doing that at the moment. And um, so researching is one way. Um, besides researching, I also enjoy cleaning up my space. I feel like when I have a clean space, whether it's my bathroom, whether it's my room, the living room, anywhere, I just, I feel like I'm able to just breathe. So if I have a day off, I'll clean up a little bit, a little here and there and make sure that everything stays very well kept so I can keep doing what I'm doing. Wow. And what I love about that is, is for some people that may not seem like a big thing, right? But it's huge to you. Right, and some people find it very difficult. Like we're talking about mental health. Yes. Some people find it really difficult to even, you know, do this. And so going on that tangent, I feel like even cleaning up just a little corner and a little bit at a time can really help brighten the space and push you forward. Yes, yes, I love that. And and so, um, you know, it lets people know it's not what other people think, but it's what makes you feel better yes. right, about yourself. And you said earlier, even if it's just making the bed, right? Oh. You feel so accomplished. Yes. I've done that. Or even just got out of the bed. Yes. And you're mentioning that it doesn't matter what other people say or think, but you know, you hear about all this self-care, like I took a bubble bath today, or I, I put music on. Yeah. Some people's self-care doesn't look like that. And I feel like there's that sort of assumption that self-care has to be that bubble bath, or it has to be you sitting down with a book, but self-care is whatever you make it to be, whatever, whatever makes you relaxed and happy. That's, that's your self-care. Wow. 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 Listen, I can't wait to read this article if it's going to be public i don't know if it's going to be you know in some kind of journal that you got to order but oh but, man i don't know <laughs> i love it oh wow that what you just said was so powerful right what does self-care look to you mm -hmm. right and it's what matters to you yeah. and i love that about you alexia because that is just like that just opened up a world to so many people like it doesn't have to look like that yeah, no, there's no look to self-care. There's no look to doing anything. Wow, wow, I love it, I love it. Again, I told you everybody, she's awesome. Kind of <laughs> so I know she's doing a research article, but I'm hoping that a book comes out or some kind of or something about, you know, but I love it, I love it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, you again, and and you are, I, I looked at what your focus of study is. You are majoring in psychology mm -hmm. with a double minor in anthropology and neuroscience. I got to ask you, how did you decide on these areas of focus? So for my psychology major, I feel like I've elaborated a lot on that. Well, um, I really want to push mental health awareness forward and drive other people to be the best, um, the best version of themselves. Mm -hmm. As for my minor in anthropology, I felt as though that was something that would make me stand out. And it gives you um, this information on people that's different than the information that you would learn in psychology. Right. You learn about world cultures, you learn about how people interact with each other. Yes. And I feel like that just gives you more of a well-rounded perspective in yes. going into the field of psychology. And as for neuroscience, you know, 
with psychology and anthropology, you're getting these hypotheticals and these theories, but neuroscience gives you those cold, hard facts of what's actually going on. How does the brain look? How is it working? What are the receptors doing? And um, so you have both the theoretical and the hardcore fact. I'm just going to call you from now on, Dr. Alexius. That's it. That's it. Listen, I know you're aspiring for your PhD, but listen, we've got a couple of years. It's already done, Alexius. I'm just going to call you Dr. Alexius. Oh, man. Um, wow. That was powerful. Thank you. I, I love how you merged and you just kind of kind of assumed each of the studies into each other and like you like it's just so natural to you it's, it's I, I love it yeah i could tell <laughs> it's awesome so listen i'm 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 not going to be surprised if i see a podcast or a live or something or i would love to one okay. day one yes. day oh my goodness your story is just amazing your journey is because you are so again, thank you so much. And everybody, as I said before, I wasn't just saying doctor for doctor. You are an aspiring PhD, right? That is your aspiration. And what focus of study do you want that to be? So I really want to get my PhD or my PsyD in clinical psychology or neuropsychology. And I really want to have a focus in personality disorders, specifically borderline personality disorder. I feel like there's a lot of stigma surrounding those. And I want to bring awareness and show those individuals that they're not really bad people, no matter what society or the stigma might say. So well, listen, um, I need to, I know I've, I know we've in, engaged and interacted before, but please, the next time I got to get your autograph and I want to get a <laughs> selfie because I got to have proof. Okay. All but right, all right, I'm down for it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, so listen, um, wow, wow, wow. So now, I, I and of course, you know, with you riding horses, I mean, I've seen just so many beautiful pictures of you. I've seen your journey for the last number of years that I've known you, um, and it's been wonderful. How, how, going back, how did, horseback riding it's one thing to you know have a barn and a space like did your family have a barn or did your friends have a barn? how did you even begin this journey in that area I was I was born with the horse bug I just ever since I was really little I've just always loved horses and my grandpa would bring me up to this barn that was on his road and they had a huge paddock so like a big fenced in area and the horses would come up to to us and we would give them carrots and whatnot pet the horses and i was really really young at the time and i would call him every week hey can i get a horse this week can i get a horse for my birthday i'll do anything wow. and um, my seventh birthday came around and I had my birthday party at a barn. And from then I started taking lessons. When I was 15, I got my first horse, thank you to my grandpa. And um, it's just it's just been in my life ever since. Wait a minute, wait, wait, wait. How, how, how long was it from the birthday party in the barn to having your own horse? Oh man. Or at least beginning horseback riding, I should say. Um, like how long was it? when I was at the you, what 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 age did you start horseback riding itself seven I was wow. seven yeah oh my goodness mm -hmm. well I, I listen um I don't know at seven I don't know what I was but, but I sure wasn't riding horses <laughs> um but that but but you're telling me that there was something in you that drew you to horseback riding even before you went down the street with, with your grandfather to the yeah really i think so i'm wow. pretty sure wow yeah. now you're not a horse whisperer are you like okay. you you have the ability to, to to talk and calm them down do you my favorite thing to say and i i do talk to these horses i i sound so insane when i no, do. no that's but, but i've seen i've seen movies i've seen books about people that have a special gift right mm -hmm. so i didn't know if that was you too so my my thing is is that anyone can be a horse whisperer because 
really what a horse whisperer is, is a horse listener wow. where you're listening to what the horse is saying. And obviously they don't talk like you or I do, but they give you a lot of different cues that you might not even think about the shape of their eyes, the way that their hooves are sitting, the way that their tail is swishing, you know, you can just feel it out and you just go off of their body signal and they feel your body signal. They can feel your heart rate from feet away. It's crazy how sensitive they are. And all you really wow. have to do is listen to them. Wow. I'm, I'm just, and I can just see your psychology. I can see all of your study of, of your knowledge in, in this. And that's amazing. It's really helped, honestly. <laughs> Yes. Oh my goodness. I mean, you're telling me things I would have never from the eyes and from the, the wagging of the tail that would call it. Yeah. The, I mean, just, just you don't all. think about it, but every little thing adds up. Wow. Wow. Well, listen, I, I just, I'm in, I'm in awe of you. You are literally truly an inspiration. And so from age seven, when did you start to, comp what, what age did you start to compete in terms of horseback riding, if you can remember? I think I was nine. And my first competition ever was on a horse named SL. She was a school horse, so a lesson horse. And um, I was doing like the little stuff because it was my first show. You know, I've only been riding for two years yeah. at that time. And the horse got scared. And she bucked, like she went this way. This is her front end, this is her back end. And I landed on her neck, stayed on, and then gracefully dismounted. <laughs> um, got a whole round of applause. And I really think that that's where my uh, my whole knack for working with horses came in. Wow. So yeah. Wow. So only two years in, you are competing at the age of nine. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now, for those who may not understand the horse uh, the, the competition world in terms of horseback riding, what does it entail? Because I've seen shows on television where they're jumping over hurdles like and jumping over water and like, is, is that yeah. what you're doing or, or something different? So there's a lot of different fields within horseback riding. There's two distinct realms that I think we can kind of classify and group. There's the Western world where you have those big cowboy saddles without the nose band on the horse's bridle. And then you have the English world where that's like the pretty um, dancy, prancy kind of thing. Um, so I'm in the English realm and um, I do dressage, the hunter jumpers, equitation jumpers. I think that's it. And um, so the hunters judges the horse's form and how nice the horse is going over the jumps, how they're taking the jumps and their consistency of their pace through the entire course of the jumps. Okay. Um, the equitation, the judge looks at how the rider and the horse mesh. And they also look at how pretty the rider is and how easy the rider is making it look. As for dressage, that just is a French word for training. So this gives a spotlight to the horse and it shows how well trained the horse is to the rider's cues. It should look like the rider isn't doing anything. And they're doing these really advanced movements like flying lead changes or they're extending the pace or they're collecting it back. And then the jumpers is just going around a course in a timely fashion. And if you get the top time, then you win. But it's not about speed. It's more about how careful you are and how tactile it is. Um, you have to be really cautious. It's more about the turns rather than going fast. Wow. Wow. And, and you've been competing since the age of nine mm -hmm. and, yeah. and how, and without giving your age now, how long has it been since, since you've been riding? So I'm 20. I don't mind giving it out. I'm 20. So I've been riding for 13 years now. Yeah. Wow. Wow. And I just, you know, it, it just really inspires me just to listen to you talk mm -hmm. about horseback riding and the different types of competitions and all of the nuances, yeah. like, because that to, to detail, right? It's about not how fast you go, right? But, but about yeah. the pace and the, the gait and the, 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 the sophistication of what you right. do without even knowing that it's being done. Yeah, right? that is yeah. amazing. So I got to ask you, right, because I've seen this so, from horses to different types of um, sometimes I, I've seen people say, you know what, 
I had to match, like I had to feel the horse was like, how did you pick the horse or did the horse pick you? Like I've heard people say like the horse, you know, picked me or I, how does that work in terms of knowing like this is the right horse for you? So sometimes you can't choose okay. Like with my college competitions. I'm going to different barns and they're randomly drawing a horse for me to ride. Oh, and I wow. Have to ride. Really? Mm -hmm. And I've never ridden that horse ever, maybe once or twice in a past competition, but I have to ride that horse as best as I can as for buying a horse. And like, if you're going to be working with a horse. Right. Um, so my first horse, I ended up with him because he licked my hand and things just felt right with him. As for my current horse, I <laughs> I said, absolutely no past race horses. I don't want a young horse. I want an established jumper. I don't want to work on training or anything. Wow. What do I end up with? I end up with an ex race horse who <laughs> needs a lot of training and a lot of patience and the exact opposite of what I wanted. And we loaded him up on the trailer and brought him home that day. <laughs> Usually doesn't happen, but right. we did it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. And, and it probably has been one of the best experiences you've you ever had. Yes, yes, wow. yes. Wow. Well, listen, I, I again, to, to just see you in that realm, it is wonderful um, and just so awe inspiring. Again, I love your inspiration. I love your, your strength and courage. Again, I don't even know, like I've ridden one lovely horse maybe tw twice in my life, right? Uh -huh. um, but yeah, it's like, it's very um, daunting. It's very like you're sitting up hi and you're hoping the horse doesn't react to anything <laughs> yeah. um so i gotta ask again i know i had sent it to you before but you know do you have to like how, how do you prepare for that or can you like in terms of like you hoping the horse follows all the rules follows your commands right but have you ever had the experience where it didn't and kind of and but how do you prepare for that or is it just a life experience that you have to kind of or is there a way to kind of prepare for that in any kind of way so in terms of them not listening or like not responding to any of the aids or anything, it's definitely very frustrating, especially after a long day sometimes. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you have to revisit and go back down a little bit and be like, okay, you know what? We were going to work on this today, but let's work on perfecting something else that we already know. To end on that good note, if a horse gets scared or spooked and they decide, oh no, and they react and you end up losing your balance and you feel like you're going to fall off, then, I mean, you you can't really prepare for it. I know some people say that you can. I've never really thought about it. Um, your body just kind of instinctively goes to where it feels safe. Um, so you, you know, you can fall on the ground. You can get thrown into a wall. You can fall over a fence. You can get thrown over a fence. Like wow. anything can happen. And mm, just sure. knowing that anything can happen and preparing yourself before it can or does happen can really help you uh, recover. Wow. Wow. I have to ask you, um, is there a certain way that you prepare before a competition? Do you have a routine? that you can share, because some things you may not want to share, but are there things that you do on a consistent basis that helps you mentally or physically prepare for a competition? Oh man, competitions, they can get a little bit daunting and anxiety provoking sometimes. I'm not even going to lie. Um, I, I just really try and breathe through them. <laughs> um, keeping track of how I'm breathing, what I'm eating, what I'm drinking. I try and drink a lot the night before because um, during the day of the show, I just, I kind of zone out and I'm in that zone. So I want to make sure that I'm hydrated. So I'm on my a game. And so I can focus on my breathing. And so I can give my best self for my horse. Wow. Wow. Well, listen, that is truly awesome. And I mean, I got to ask you like, cause I didn't know, are there height requirements for competition weight requirements, or can anybody, you know, like, can you be six foot five and also compete or can you be you know I didn't know what what type of physical requirements there were yeah so I mean it, it really doesn't depend on the person it depends on the horse let's say so I'm like a, around 510 I can't ride the little pony because I'm gonna crush it like <laughs> I'm too tall for that so I need a bigger horse 
And if I weigh a little bit more, then I might need a horse that's going to be able to carry my weight. Got it. Um, Got there's it. not a specific requirement. Right. I think they say you should be 20% of your horse's body weight okay. and you're, you're all set. But other than that, I think there's no restrictions. Okay. So I, I still have a chance. You, you definitely have a chance. Come on out to Long Island. Hop on my guy. Oh, my goodness. Listen, we have to make that happen one day. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So um, I wanted to ask you about your preparation, right? Our, you know, our broadcast, one, again, the purpose is really to share amazing journeys of others and how they've achieved amazing plateaus and goals in life. And, um, you know, they see you, right? Again, I, I see you with medals. I see you with acknowledgments. I've seen you accomplish so many wonderful things in the horseback riding arena. Um, and I wanted to ask you about your preparation because so many people see you like at, on top of the mountain, but don't know how you got there. Can you just share with us, like, what is your regiment? I mean, it might be different now than when you first began, I don't know, but like, are you practicing X number of days a week, X number of hours a day? Like, how does that all work? So horseback riding, I, oh my gosh, I practice so many hours a week. Some days I get there at like 6.30 in the morning, six in the morning and stay there for about five, six hours. Some days I'll leave at midnight because I'm coming straight from school. And I, I, I don't really have a specific amount of hours. If I had to guess maybe about 25 hours a week that I'm putting in at the barn, because I have so many horses that I'm riding and so many things that I'm doing and trying to put together and string together and work in a routine. Yes. So I, I just kind of take it in stride. I, I don't really, I don't have a routine. Honestly, I'm very, I'm disorganized. <laughs> I, I just, no, I you're not. No, you're, you, well, it must be the best disorganization that I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> you are you are just you are just um succeeding and you are just rising and you are just shining as the star you are so continue to be disorganized dr alexius thank you i will i will <laughs> so um i mean i i i wanted to ask and i didn't ask you before but um i would gather that each horse has its own temperament Right. And so do you have to learn as a rider to learn different, like, like to just learn how to ride differently because different horses have different gaits or temperaments or like, does that exist at all? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> listen, like I mentioned before, like I'm working with a bunch of different horses and yes. every horse has a different personality. Right. My first horse was so nasty. He was amazing. Don't get me wrong. I loved him to death, but he was nasty. He would try and bite me. I couldn't get near him. I couldn't sit with him without him feeling offended. Um, my current horse right now is the biggest cuddle bug I've ever met. Oh, wow. Ever. He is the sweetest boy in the entire world, really takes care of me and everything. Wow. And then I'm working with another horse who is absolutely insane. She's not like bad or anything, but she's learning and she's very fiery. So Trinity, is, that's her name, <laughs> just needs a little bit more guidance. And she needs something different than what my horse Paddington is getting because they're just, it's, it's like people where you look at one person and they don't need the same thing that another person right. might need. Right. Wow. That's amazing. That's a lot. That's a lot to know. <laughs> so, um, for someone who wanted to get into horseback riding and then also get into competition at some point, if they came to you for training, right, they're just beginning this process or thinking about it, what, what characteristic would you say has helped you? Again, it may different, maybe, maybe it works for different people, different ways, but what would you say was important for you that may help somebody else in terms of just having the right mindset or the right approach, right? Because we're all different individuals as well. And so what would you say would be some positive or some key characteristics for someone that might want to go into this area? So I'm not going to be cliche here because everyone says patience. Patience is what you need. And yes, you do need patience. Right. But I really think that you need a sense of humor. A lot of people don't look at that, but you need a sense of humor. A horse is having a bad day. You got to laugh it off and come back <laughs> at it the next day. There's only 24 hours in a day. 
you go back the next day and you work at it like it's a different horse, you know? You gotta laugh things off because if you dwell on it with them, they, they're not gonna understand. They don't have the mindset that we do where it's like, right, right. I did something bad and now I'm getting disciplined and that's going to go into tomorrow. They don't think that way. They don't think that way for the next hour. You know, if you, if you have a bad ride, you get off and you still care for the horse. You still have to laugh it off and still care for them because everyone has their bad days. Yes. Wow. I listen, I I just I just um applaud you. Thank you, you. you. You are just um I I would have never thought about humor. Like I would have never thought about laughter, right? Yeah. But but that is that is powerful. And what I love about you is that it, even though there's some things that may be like be cliche-ish, right? Mm -hmm. But I, I love that there's an individuality about you where you're like you're okay speaking to something else that might be outside the realm of what others may be thinking about because mm -hmm. i'm sure people probably wouldn't think humor or laughter when no we're and you don't because like i said before you sometimes you get so frustrated when they're not listening to you that day and you're like oh like you just want to rip your hair out sometimes it gets really frustrating they're animals they have a mind of their own but if you if you literally laugh it off you'll just trick your mind into thinking hey everything's going okay you gotta laugh and smile through it and wow. you know what it'll end up okay i love it uh, listen tell, tell me what is do you have any aspirations in the horseback riding competition arena like do you want to be or achieve something in that area i would absolutely love to open up my own llc at one point i want to um be able to have my own um name under my training. I want to be able to train horses. I want to be able to teach lessons. I want to have my own barn with horses that I might be buying and reselling or working with. And at some point, maybe I might even be able to incorporate my psychology with it because horse therapy and equine therapy are just is just this growing field that is so important and overlooked. I think that, hey, maybe one day those will just clash and mesh into one thing. Alexius, I'm sorry, Dr. <laughs> Alexius, that is so wonderful. I mean, I'm, I've am i heard of like pet therapy, right? Where where dogs are brought into the hospital to, to, to help people heal, yeah. right? And to get through. And I know there's also, I would assume there's horse therapy too, right? Yeah. Different, those who are going through different um, challenges in life go to yes. you know, a, a ranch and, and just have a day of inspiration and healing. And that is wonderful. Oh yeah. my God, I see that. It's very beneficial for those who are on the autism spectrum or yes. people who might have experienced PTSD, yes. anxiety issues. It's, it's really great for a variety of different things. And I would love to be a part of someone's journey within that. Listen, um, if you ever go public, I want to invest. <laughs> All right. I'll take it. Listen, whatever you, listen, I would definitely want to invest in you because, because you're going to change lives. Thank you. I hope so. It's not about the money. It's, it's about the changing of lives Absolutely. of people in this world. And money I'm telling you. Money doesn't mean anything when you can help people. Yes. I mean, that'll come, you know, that, that's, that that's just an yeah. offshoot of whatever you, because if you do what you love, I just believe there's a fulfillment that yes. will, that that just flows from that. And so please, I would love to support you in any way that I can, because that is life changing. I'll remember it. I'll yes. remember I need a million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I'm telling you, one day I'm going to have it to give to you. <laughs> All right. I'm here for it. Yes. Listen, <laughs> if you are, you are worth and this is not just because I'm, I'm very choicy about my words. You are worth the investment. Thank you, you. Are, you are worth not all that, but just you as an individual, you are worth that investment and more actually. So um, yes, whatever I can do to support you and all that you're doing with your own barn and your own academy and training and healing through it and just um, the documentary that's going to be about you as well. And all of that and the movie that's going to come from that as well and oh, man listen listen all i just let me be in the crowd 
All right, you're there. You're you're on the horse's back. Come on, you wanted a chance. In the movie, I just want to be in the crowds. So. Oh my goodness. You know, or or a photographer in the pit taking photos. So yes, I will take that. <laughs> but I am just really just so proud of you, Alexius. I I just um, yeah. I I I just. I'm getting emotional, but I'm very just proud of you. I know you're gonna make me cry. Don't no, do that. No, we can't do that. We can't do that on the live. Okay, but uh, no, it's okay. But just so proud of you. Just so from 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 just not giving up, not not allowing you know those experiences to you know just hold back um, the greatness of who you are. It's wonderful. I'm so. Thank you thankful for you just believing and pressing and pushing and even through the hurts, even through the dark moments, even through the times where you didn't think you could. Thank you for doing that because it's saving so many people. My goodness, just hearing your journey. So thank you so much. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, my goodness. And not alone that from the horses to the barns to the horseback riding and the competition, you still find time to my goodness, work with um, um, Guide Dog, the, the Guide Dog Foundation and Americans Vet Dogs. Tell me more about that and how did you become a, a part of that? So I honestly, getting the job, my mom just sent me a Facebook post and I was like, heck yeah, I've volunteered for this organization before. They are wonderful people. The trainers are absolutely lovely. The wow. dogs are incredibly smart oh my gosh, you would never imagine. And I used to volunteer at the 5k. Um, my mom was involved with them. We did virtual dog walks and now I'm working with them. And I really get the pleasure of seeing how these dogs are being trained and them working and seeing them change the lives of others who might have disabilities or who might be blind. And it's so wonderful. And that's inspirational. Wow. Wow. Well, all I can do is applaud you. I mean, you are just a joy. Thank you are you. just giving all of your inspiration to others to inspire them and working with the horses and now the, the dogs to support those. I mean, good, that, uh, that, that just need uplifting and encouraging and all that is. Listen, and I can't even, you know, and, and even that, everybody, she's like a pageant, like she's a queen. Before she even got into pageantry, she was a queen, right? So. Then, then you go into pageantry. I'm trying to figure out where do you find time? What do you do all of this? Tell me how pageantry, one, became a part of your journey and what impact has it had thus far in who you are today? So my mom was a national pageant queen growing up. She, insane. Wow. And she still is. <laughs> Um, love her to death. And she inspired me to get into pageantry myself. I heard her talk about the benefits of it and how it changed her for the better and how it taught her so many things and how she's still in contact with people who she competed with wow. years ago. So I wanted to be a part of that connection. I wanted to learn and learn more about myself. So I joined pageantry and, um, I, 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 I think it has had a major impact on the person who I am today. It really taught me so much. The interviews, just being on stage and making your presence known. Wow. Just, it, it translated from pageants to my normal life. I, now I know how to make my presence known. Now I know how I need to approach different things and how I can talk and answer questions and, I've met so many amazing people and like yourself and I've done so oh, many amazing things. It's just, it's been life-changing. Wow. Well, listen, all I know is you were a queen before you put the gown on, uh, but it has, it has really been just wonderful seeing you grace that stage and just go forth um, because you have a light about you. Thank and you. and people talk about the the crown, but but you have this crown, you have this royalty about you that is just beautiful and wonderful, and it is just so inspiring. I I love the, 
your words of choice, making your presence known. I can tell you, Dr. Alexia, people know your presence. Thank you. People know that you're in the room. And you don't want to make it like, uh, you you never want to make it this, and I've never wanted to make it this yeah. cocky presence. Like I'm here and it's all me. Like I want to make my presence known for the betterment of others. Yes. I want to be there for others. Like I mentioned before, I want to be that person to change someone's life. Yes. And you're doing it. That's what I, I'm not talking about your physical presence. I'm about your <laughs> impact, Dr. Alexia. Listen, I'm telling you, it is wonderful and amazing. And so it might even, you might not even realize it. But I, there is an aura about you that really touches upon so many. And I'm telling you, there are people who are watching you, who are looking at you, who are just inspired by your photos and things that are posted, things you share. And just continue to do that because you are definitely making a difference. So um, I don't know if they would allow it, but man, that would be wonderful on a pageant stage for you to ride out it, ride in on a horse. That I would, would love man, that. I that, would love that. Listen, I'm telling you, the, the horse would definitely have to drop the mic. That would be a drop the mic moment. He he holds things. He'll hold his brushes. He can hold the mic and drop it. Woo, I love on it. it. <laughs> I love that. Wow. Wow. That would be amazing. So <laughs> I don't know how it's going to happen, but I don't know. We have to make it happen. We'll, we'll make it work. We'll make yes. it work. <laughs> yes. You know what? I'm going to do a pageant and let you ride in on the horse. Yes. My dream. <laughs> so I have to ask you, um, so do you have any further aspirations in pageantry? Are you going to continue? Like, do you have any goals or thing on your vision board? Or do you just really love to be a part i mean you're hoping but like but, but do you have aspirations or do you just want to be a part of it in a sense of growing of course you want to win i understand that but i'm just saying are there specific aspirations that you want to achieve so i think with pageantry um i I'm, I'm in like a break right now because I really do want to put a lot of my time and energy into focusing on school, focusing on these research papers that I'm writing just for fun and obviously working with my horse and entering more competitions. So if, if I were to join another pageant, I would just continue to try and keep growing. I would love to continue meeting some amazing people, the people um, or the queens who are the international and national queens of IUM right now, seeing them on the stage. And I, I was a sister queen of, um, I believe she's the teen. She is so incredible. And I, I loved meeting everyone. And that's what I want. And that's what I would go back for. I love it. I love it. And, and that's why you are who you are. That is why who you are. Yeah. And, and, and even still becoming which I love that about you is that there's so much more, so much more. And I'm so excited and can't wait to see more of you in terms of just my goodness, making your presence even known greater. And I'm excited for you and all that you're doing. Listen, um, how do you balance it all? How do you, how do you, how do you balance it? Simple answer. I don't know. I don't know. And that's I, truth. That's truth, right? <laughs> I I just continue on with my day to day life. I wake up, I make my bed, and I'm like, all right, got five horses to ride today. It's six in the morning. All right, we'll shoot out there. Uh, maybe be done in five hours. We'll get back, shoot around, do some chores. Um, maybe I need to go to the bank today. Maybe maybe I need to write a little bit for an essay or maybe I need to work on something for school. That's what I'll do. And I'll just take everything in stride. I, like I said before, I'm very disorganized and I really don't have this big plan. And I, I have a lot of people that do ask me or wonder how I do manage it all. I don't know. <laughs> I, I could not tell you. I just do it. Yeah. And that's, I, I feel like that's what you just got to do. You just got to keep pushing and it's going to wow. be uncomfortable and it's going to take a while and it's, it's going to be hard and tedious and tiring, but it is what it is. And you know, you get it done. Wow. Well, listen, I, I hope there is someone that is filming your journey and if not prior going forward, because it's going to be a documentary about you. So I'm, I'm hoping that people have footage of you walking into the barn, caring for the horses, 
practicing and all of that. I wish we were closer because I would do it for you. I know you got to come to Long Island. I got to get out there. Oh my goodness. Come on. <laughs> we'll make it happen. We'll make it happen. I promise we'll make it happen. Um, so I, I want to ask you, um, you know, you've, you've, what would you say has been the most challenging part of your journey? I know you shared some things happened in the beginning. So if, if that was it, that's fine. But um, what would you say has been the most challenging part for you, whether it's in horseback riding, whether it's just in life or pageantry or just in any other area, but what would you say has been the, the most challenging or one of the most challenging parts of your journey and how did you overcome that? So as I mentioned before, like I had a lot of my own inner demons where I had these anxieties and I had this lack of confidence and growth isn't linear. And I feel like it took a while for me to understand that. And it took a while for me to understand myself and what I was going through and how I could grow from that. And to be completely honest, there are days when I feel like it's hard to get out of bed or I, I don't want to go to the barn some days because I'm just so tired and I don't feel like it. But again, growth isn't linear and no one is perfect and no one is going to be getting up every day out of bed. Like I'm, I'm seizing the day. And if anyone says that they're a liar, <laughs> you know, you can fake it and you can really go at it with that attitude, but some days you're going to be in a slump and some days it's just really hard. And you know what? You just got to ride it out and you got to keep pushing forward. Wow. Listen, I want my t-shirt. Growth isn't linear, Dr. Alexius. I want my t-shirt. I want my t-shirt now because listen, whether you go, you work with your trademark and a patent it, whatever you do, that, I love it. I love that. Listen, there is a website that does that they have a lot of mental health t-shirts and one of them is healing isn't linear. Wow. And it's selfcareisforeveryone.com. And I believe that 10% of the profits go to um the American I love it. Suicide Prevention Foundation. Wow. So, wow. That. Oh, listen. Um, is there anything else that we have not touched upon that you want to share with us about? your amazing journey thus far. Um, you're doing so much. Is, is there something that's on your vision board that you haven't done yet? So something that I haven't done yet, I guess would be um, publishing an article of my own. I would absolutely love to do it. And my boyfriend keeps telling me and my family keeps telling me, you know, you got to publish something, you got to do it. And that's on my vision board. Awesome. But I one day I'm going to do it. Yes. Uh, maybe even this one that I'm writing right now. But something that we haven't covered that I want to go over, I guess, would be um, just to tell those who are watching that might be in this rut right now where the healing isn't linear, where you're in the little downslope. Just keep going and ride the motions. Things things pass and you have to keep faking it till you make it. Everyone, you know, people, some people come up to me and they ask me about my confidence or they ask me how I'm doing it all. I'm not a, I don't believe that I'm a confident person at times, but you got to fake it till you make it and keep pushing to be your best self. Wow. Wow. Well, listen, I am so proud of you, Alexius. Yeah. And um, I'm going to ask the question because that was so inspiring to so many, I'm going to just see if this sparks a different response. But yes, if you come across that person who doesn't see their dream coming to pass, what would you say to them to encourage, if anything else additional than what you just shared? I think that I would tell them that good things come to those who wait. Mm. And while you continue to achieve your dream, it's not linear. Nothing is linear, really. There's no straight path and there's no right or wrong way to get to your final destination. And there's going to be slumps. Um, and I think that I would tell them to keep chasing after what they're chasing because the things that you want most are the hardest to get. And it's so rewarding when you get them. It's so rewarding when you get there and you can look back on your journey and say, I did it and I made it. I did this. 
Wow. Well, listen, Dr. Alexius, I want to put my request in now. When you publish your article, I would like a signed copy. I'm going to frame it. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I, I want a signed copy because I am just, I know that's going to be the beginning. I mean, it's already, your journey has already begun. Your story has already been told. It's already been being told, if that even sounds right, but I know what I mean. It's already been <laughs> yeah, I get it. I got you. Yeah, thank you. And it is still evolving. Thank you. Which is even that much more inspiring because I'm saying to myself, how much more amazing can you get? But I know you are going to become even more amazing than yeah, you already thank are. You. Which thank is you. Awesome and amazing. So I wanted to ask you, um, is there anyone uh, or ones or things or however, that you wanted to just acknowledge, again, those who have been a support to you or any experience that you want to share that's been a support to you and you becoming who you are. We always want to give time. Some people don't want to, you know, give out names, but, you know, we always give the opportunity to, to share if anyone wants to acknowledge anyone that's been a support to them thus far. Absolutely. I have so many people in my support system who I'm more than grateful um, to have at my side, just walking with me. I have my family who has just been there for me from day one, literally. And they have just continued to push me to be the best version of myself. And they, they're the ones who helped me through my journey when I was struggling and who picked me up when I felt down and who continued to push me and ask me questions as to why I'm not where I want to be and push me to continue on that path. And I have my friends who have just been incredible support systems themselves. I felt like growing up, I didn't have that support system and now I do. And it is so refreshing to be able to look at my group and say, these are my people and I love them. I love surrounding myself with them because they're amazing people themselves. And I, I want to thank, oh my goodness. I want to thank um, the owners of the horses that I've had the pleasure of working with in the past, or maybe even in the present. And I want to say thank you to them, especially um, Trinity's owner who might be watching this now because um, everyone's <laughs> everyone who I've worked with has been incredible and they have shown me so many things to continue pushing me forward on my journey and have continued to inspire me to continue reaching for my final destination within the horseback riding realm. And lastly, but certainly not least, I want to thank my grandpa for teaching me how to read, write, and do math when I was three and for bringing me up to that fence line and for showing me and believing in me and coming to every lesson, every show, coming to my lessons even now and pushing me with my horse and giving me the opportunities that he has and being behind me when it comes to school or work or just being my rock when I need someone to listen to, uh, listen to my, um, little rants or my rambles or my info dumps about mental health or about horses or maybe what I ate that day. <laughs> so thank you to all of those. I love all of them individually for who they are and who they continue to push me to be. Wow. Wow. Wonderful and so beautiful. Um, and thank you for being you. Thank you for being you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it's, it's just a wonderful joy to um, be able to share your journey. Um, and this broadcast is going to touch so many people. It's touched me first and foremost. Um, again, just to get to know you even greater of who you are and your journey and just the, 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 the truly star and angel and light of inspiration and just phenomenal person, individual you are. Hold on to that continue to let your light shine because it's beautiful and it's wonderful. Um, mm -hmm. And your presence is definitely known. So mm -hmm. thank you, Alexius. Um, I want to thank you. Where can people connect with you or if someone wants to learn more about you um, uh, or just, just maybe, because again, with all that you talk about with the mental health and the advocacy, you're working with, again, the dogs and the vets and the foundation, um, for someone who just wants to maybe touch base with you, how can they get in touch with you? Sure. So we have my Facebook um, and then anyone can message me on there. 
Um, if not my Facebook, then my Instagram, which is just alexius.ruland. And if not there, then my email is alexius.ruland at gmail.com. So any questions, inquiries, concerns, any comments can go to any of those three. And I will gladly get back to anyone who has any of those. Wonderful. Well, before I give the closing, I want to give you um, any final words that you want to share with us at this point. Um. I, I think I've said my piece, but thank you very much for having me. It's an honor just being here. I appreciate it. No, thank you, Alexius. And again, I'm so honored and privileged that you accepted the invitation to come Absolutely. on the podcast. And again, yes. And I and you talked about your mom being this. She is amazing. This pageant. Oh yeah, national. she's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> she's awesome. Again, I'm. I. I. Your. Your mom is it inspiration as well just so proud of her as well but just oh, yeah. thank you so much again for sharing you with us and with the world um those who will see this video now live and those who will watch it later on in the years to come and just be inspired about you so thank you for just being true thank you for being transparent thank you for being amazing thank you for being courageous even though you might not feel so but thank you for being courageous and confident and strong and willing to just be honest. And I love the fact that you even said, I don't know. You're like, I, I, I don't know how. I don't. Know. <laughs> I, don't. I don't know how I do it, right? But, but you just do it, right? And I love that about you. And even being what you may count disorganized, you're still organized to us. I'm like, wow. But, but, but I do want to say this before I close. I love the fact that, and, and you said this, Every step matters. Everything you do, getting up matters. That's important. Every step you take, putting on your shoes, tying yes. them, getting out the door, that yes. matters. Yes. And so thank you for sharing that because that right there truly uplifted so many. It's not, I don't have to leap over mountains. No. I just never. get up and I can just see it. My goodness, that is a powerful moment right then and there, right? And so just thank you so much for all of who you are, Alexius. And again, I'm honored. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Everybody, again, Alexius Ruland, thank you so much again for being a guest on our broadcast. This is Troy Alexander Inspiration with Troy Alexander. Again, our motto is dream, take that step and walk with purpose into your destiny. Thank you so much for your support and your love and go get your dream. Thank you so much, Alexius. Dr. Alexius Rulin. Thank you so much. Have a good Thank night. Thank you. You're welcome.